In this video, we're going to be looking at what the graph of two variables in direct proportion look like. But first of all, I want to consider what two variables that are in direct proportion, what it means. Okay, the key thing when two variables in direct proportion, if you multiply one by a number, you must multiply the other one by the same number. So for example, if I was converting pounds to dollars, if I was getting $1.2 for every pound, if I had two pounds, I would get double the amount of dollars, $2.4. If I had 10 times 10 pounds, I would have 10 times $1.212. Okay, so they are said to be in, in direct proportion. Okay, so when one doubles, the other doubles. When one halves, the other halves. One times by five, the other times by five. So let's take a look at some uh, tables with variables on and see if we can work out if these are in direct proportion. So first of all, here we have x is 1, y is 2, x is 2, y is 4, x is 3, y is 6. Now, we can see here, 1, if we times it by 2, we get 2. 2, if we times it by 2, we get 4. 1, if we times it by 3, we get 3. 2, if we times it by 3, we get 6. So these two are in direct proportion. Okay, on this next one here, 1, again, we double to get 2, but this time, 1, when we times it by 2, we don't get 4. So those two are not in direct proportion. Now, there is another relationship going on here. Some of you may spot actually this x value. If you square it, you get the number below, but it is not in direct proportion. Okay, and finally, this one here, well, again, 1, double it to get 2, 2, we double it, we do not get 5. So whilst, again, there is another relationship here, this one is not in direct proportion. Okay, now the astute of you may notice that, in fact, if we take x, multiply it by 3, and then take away 1, we will always get the number below. But that's not the case for direct proportion. So what do the graphs look like for these? Well, if we were to plot a graph of this first one, we would find it has two properties. It would pass through the origin... That is the point zero, 0, and it will be a straight line. And this is the case for all graphs that are in direct proportion. Okay, They must pass through the origin, and they must be a straight line. So let's take a look at some examples of this and see if we can spot whether they are in direct proportion. So if you want to pause it now and just take a look at this, you should be able to spot that some of these are in direct proportion, some are not. Okay. So this first one here, as we can see, passes through the origin here, 0 0.00, 0, and is a straight line. So that one is in direct proportion. This one here, whilst it is a straight line, it does not pass through the origin. So that one isn't. This one passes through the origin, but is not a straight line. So again, it cannot be. This one looks very similar to the first one, passes through the origin, and is a straight line, so therefore it is in direct proportion. This one, it's close to the origin, but it's not in the origin. So this one, even though it's a straight line, is not in direct proportion. And finally, here, it goes through the origin, is a straight line, so it is in direct proportion. So, to recap what we've done, a graph that's in direct proportion must have the two properties that it is a line that goes through the origin, the point zero, zero, and it must be a straight line. Okay, 